to Big V TV. Great to have you with us for a Tuesday night. Looking forward to tonight. Last night we talked all Youthies finals. Tonight it's the seniors. Craig Freeman with us. And we've got a big week coming up because tomorrow night and Thursday night, coaches and players of the month for the month of July. Yeah, huge week for us at Big V TV. Yes. Fridays we preview more yes. finals game. It's a huge week coming up. You're very excited. Yeah, I am. I'm up. Obviously, yeah, you saw some good games, but you also were featured in a huge game, and you're going to be excited. Game, we'll talk about yeah. that one later. It was the only Sunday game. Only Sunday game. V, I think. So I went down because I could only make a you Sunday game. You were there. There was about 400, the most people I've ever seen at a Waverley game because it was the only Big V game on Sunday. Not only that, I reckon McKinnon probably had two thirds of the crowd. Yeah, I wouldn't, be, lot, I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of McKinnon, McKinnon fans out there, which is great. Fans there. Um, more on that shortly. Division two women. Here's the results from the weekend. The Bushies are out. Blackburn got them 56 to 47. Uh, a grasshopper, Andrea Belmonte, very good, 13 and 8. Rachel Jeffrey had 13 points for the Bushies. They're out though. Great. Yeah, it's a huge win for Blackburn. They played their youthy players yep. in their senior team, and Belmonte was huge as she has been all season. A little bit of a grinded out game, and Blackburn just get out on top. Uh, Wallen, 55, defeated Melbourne Uni, 41. Emmy O'Neill, 12 and 19 for Wallen. Melbourne Uni, the fiddler, had 12 points. Uh, so Wallen progressed. Uh, they've got a shot at um, playing for a berth in the grand mm. final, of course. Melbourne still have the second yeah, chance, they, don't they? They have, but it won't and, matter. And you, it won't matter. you call it two weeks ago matter. now, they're out in straight sense. Well, they're going to get Blackburn, aren't they? Yes. The Blackburn will stitch them up. Um, let's have a look at Division 2 men. Southern Penn and Melton. Melton's got Southern Penn down yep. at the Shark Tank, 75-78. What a game. Voss the Boss had 13, uh, tw sorry, 23 and 16 for Southern Penn. Uh, but one of Steve-O's boys, uh, Dexter Graham. How good have uh, these two players in particular? Yes. We'll start with Dexter Graham. 18 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. Manny Malou joins him with 16 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. Those two have been huge the second half of the right. season. In brilliant form, carried Melton through that one. So what happens there now? So uh, they're out, aren't Southern they? Penn done. Done. Since. Because it's top six, isn't it? Yep. Which means Camberwell's done as well. Camberwell are done as Mil well. Mildura got them on the road. I did warn you Friday night last week that I the mayor of Mildura yes. was coming to I town. said this game is ripe for Calvin Henry yes. to take over. He had and 25 he points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 blocks. Peter Mander with 18 points. Nano Hara well held he was. in this game. Points, I think. Uh, strong output on both sides of the floor for Mildura. I think shutting down Nat. It's huge, and it's a, it's probably the first step you need to take when you're trying to beat Camberwell. So some big matchups coming up in semi-finals. Uh, yeah. Best of three, or are they knockout? Are they knockout? Best uh, of three. Best of three, and we'll talk about them on Friday. Friday. Okay, let's have a look at Division One women. There's the results from the weekend, and this too is a top six. So teams are done and dusted. Mm. Geelong belted Whittlesey. Spoke long and hard about Geelong last Friday night. Just said that they were shaping up at the right end. Uh, 90 to 62 in that win. Caitlin Shadbolt, 21 points. Rebecca Romeo had 11 and 13 for Whittlesey. And in the other game, Warnable down at the arc, 59 defeated Werribee, 48. Holly Green, the green machine, had 17 and 9. Alyssa Bennett, 17 and 12 for Werribee. But the devs are done. It's going to be uh, scary facing Geelong on their home deck basically uh, have looked impossible to beat for the last half of the season. They started off very slowly, and you put the pressure on them at one point in the season, but the perfect example of peaking at the right time, hit their straps heading into finals, yep. and Warnable way too good at home. So, so far, Division Two women, the two home teams won. Division Two men, the two away teams mm -hmm. got up. Uh, so the lower place teams. Division One women, the two home teams won. Let's go to Division One men. There's the two results up on screen for you. Again, done and dusted if they lose. And it was the two home teams convincingly. Yeah, both big margins in this one. Westernport getting the ball 97 to 71. Dylan Travis uh, didn't miss a beat from his regular season form. 34 points, 14 boards, 5 assists. Blunt tried his absolute heart out for Warner. We scored 44, the team only scored 71. It was he, an even first half in that game, too. And then Westernport just put yeah, the foot down with fantastic. A bit more depth, break. a bit more talent surrounding their star and then Shepparton got the job done over yeah. Warren Dyke. They, they limped into finals a little bit and then they absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and they absolutely turned did. it on when they yep. needed to. Spencer Coleman, 32 points, 27 rebounds now I, yeah. and three assists. Now I heard a bit of a story and it's a master stroke uh, by Lee Bathman and the crew, and the crew from Shepparton. It's a master stroke. Uh, so Shepard and Lint into finals. They've been a little bit clumsy over the last few weeks. Warren Dog were one of the teams that got them up there in yep. Shep. 
Uh, Lee Bathman, uh, th this is apparently true, um, and there'll be a lot spoken about this this week because it's a masterstroke. Lee Bathman uh, turned around to Spencer Coleman uh, on Monday, uh, heading into this last week, obviously, and said, Spence, I don't want you to shower for a week. I want you to stink it up. I want you to be the smelliest player on the court. He came out, no one went near him. Hey, he, he, it was a master stroke. He hadn't showered for a week. Nobody went near, 27 rebounds. Everyone stayed away from it. It's, it's a genius move. No one wanted to box him out? I've got no idea if it's true, but it's a good story, isn't it? Hey, 27 <laughs> rebounds, Craig. Huge. That's massive. That, that is, oh, I... that's the biggest rebound effort. Um, in a men's, in one of the men's divisions that I reckon I've seen mm. in three or four years. And it was, uh, look, it was opened up. Maybe longer. Great defense from Shepard, and they forced a lot of tough shots for Warren Knight. So there's a lot of rebounds there for Coleman to grab. And there was great boxing out for yep. the rest of the team as well. And I'm sure I'm sure he did have a share Shepard, during the week. Shepard and back into their uh, best that, form from the about, season. Up and about. Matt Bartlett, despite uh, ankle injuries coming in, got through the game. Played about 33 minutes. So you got your teams that had the bye, and they were in good form. They're great teams, obviously, through the season. And Western Bort and Shep have found some absolutely brilliant form in week final finals. It's going to be extremely fun last few weeks in Division 1 men. No doubt about it. Um, I was really excited to see Shepard and get up and about and win so convincingly. Um, if Spencer Coleman holds that form during the semi-finals... It's tough form to hold. I mean, that, that is a monster effort on the boards. Well done. Um, State champ women, there's the two results from the weekend. And it was the two visiting teams to get the wins. Waverley out, Hume out. Take us through it. So Sunbury had a 31 to 13 second quarter and then gave up a 2 to 18 third quarter. Still managed to win by 13 points. They were pretty convincing for most of the game outside of that third quarter, obviously. Josie Stockel with 23 points, 10 boards, 4 blocks was brilliant all over the floor. Team Cunningham with 25 and 5 to lead Waverley, but Summary's second se second half of the season form was ominous, yep. and they really turned it on. So th this was a ridiculous game in that Sunbury were leading by well, I don't know, 25, yeah. 30 odd at half time, if not more. They've come out in the third quarter and shot two points. It's arguably the worst quarter scoring wise that Sunbury's played All since Kennedy yeah, Kerry Armour basically three years uh, uh, went in there as coach. <laughs> it was an absolute shocker. Yet they came out of that quarter and still led, one by th and then one by thirteen points. Big. <laughs> um, so they get up and they do look ominous, I agree with that. Southern Penn on the road, young guns up and about, in form, playing well. Their starting unit was exceptional. Sydney Coleman, Peyton Little, Jay Shelley's star, um, Liv Pollard. Their, their starting unit just went out there and got the job done. Uh, Babbage had 20 points for Hume. She had six triples in that 20, mm. by the way. Uh, Zamet, 18 points, 12 uh, assists. It's a fair point guard battle in this game. Uh, Zamet with 18, 5, and 12. Jazz with 23, 4, and 6. And uh, Southern Penn versus Hume. We knew it was going to be a great game. Southern Penn just edge out Hume uh, on the road. Huge win. Uh, and some massive games coming up in state champ women mm -hmm. this weekend because uh, obviously Knox come back into the fray now. Yep. Um, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a very very interesting weekend. So will Waverley play Southern Penn now? Uh, correct. And um, and obviously Sunbury will go on and play Knox for a spot in the grand final. Yep. More on that later on in the week. State champ men. There's the two results. Hawthorne, who finished fourth, defeated Casey, who finished fifth. Got up by 21 points in the end. Jack Barry, Barb's boy, had 23 points and seven dimes. Uh, Matty Donlan, 16 for Casey. And then the lone game on Sunday, uh, Waverley, 72, went down to McKinnon, 86. Uh, the Cougars got it by 14 on the road. Dan Dillon, 22 and nine assists for Waverley. Adrian Tamata, huge for McKinnon. 22 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Deng Deng had uh, at least, at, they counted six, it was probably more than that blocks in this game. Um, and there were some absolute highlights. McKinnon get it on the road. They continue on. They'll play Ringwood. Uh, Hawthorne move on. They'll play Eltham. Yeah, McKinnon put the foot down early and it looked like it, they were going to run away with it. And then early in the fourth quarter, Jason Reardon knocked down a couple of threes. Yeah. He was huge in that last term. Um, and Dylan hit a few shots. They got in a little bit of run. I think it came all the way back down to six. six. Yep. Um, Jermaine hit a big three. Deng hit a three. Yep. And really it was all over. From there, uh, I'm going to give a positive shout out to the McKinnon coach sitting here. Ooh, hello. I don't this do doesn't this, happen often. Don't do this often. Hello. But there's a lot of coaches that would tighten the reins on players like Deng and uh, Dylan, who uh, put on an absolute show on the yeah. weekend. But credit to Justin. 
allows his players to so play with some freedom. This, and this uh, isn't on the notes. Where there was, I think Dylan had two or three dunks. Dan had a <laughs> number of dunks. That he lets them play fast, and he lets them, and that's what gets the crowd in. I think a lot of coaches maybe pull the reins a little too tight on talent like that. Oh, it's not on the notes. So I appreciate that call out. It, it's about the players though, and uh, I, gee, I'll tell you what, they they absolutely love the highlight mm. reel, don't they? There were some spectacular plays in that game. The yeah, crowd. Yes was certainly entertaining. Dylan had a uh, great putback dunk as well, and then a nice alley-oop from yeah. uh, Dang in the last quarter. One thing that really hurt Waverley, I thought, was a, a lack of depth uh, at their big man mm. spot, especially Sturt struggled in this matchup, I think, especially when Ivan wasn't on the floor for him to guard. He mm. had to guard Deng or Dylan, mm. which is very tough for the big man to do, and Noah Cowell, really, re yeah. who really could have stepped in and played some backup five and guarded those uh, athletic bigs. First time um, in my time at the club, and, and Ivan for that matter, because uh, of course he played a lot of wonderful years for, for the Waverley Falcons. First time McKinnon's beaten Waverley. Uh, so that's the first time, yep, they've been the bogey team and uh, McKinnon got over the line. And sets us up for some sensational yep. matchups in the uh, semi-finals. Anyway, more on that later on in the week. We'll be back on Friday to look at all the games coming up on the weekend. What we can tell you, Craig, is tomorrow night, we're looking at the coach and players of the month for July for the youthies. And then on Thursday night, we're doing the same all over again for the seniors. And these shows every month when they do them, off the charts. They go off. This will be the last one we do, obviously, yeah. before we find out MVPs, All-Star Fives at awards night. So it's going to be exciting. going to be a lot of debate. Looking forward to it. And uh, then we get back into business previewing some more finals. Looking forward to it. Going to be a lot of fun. It is a special time of the year. There's no doubt about it. The month of August is all about big V finals, and we are just starting to warm up. Big shows coming up this week. Make sure you join us again. As always, every night, 5.30 p.m. Big V TV right here. We'll see you tomorrow night.